This documentary about coaching is a purely non-profit venture. Anyone interested in coaching will be able to watch it against a small donation. I will use the funds to set up a coach training program in Kenya starting end of this year. The training program as such will be launched in collaboration with a charity called Mama Organization. And we will train women to become coaches. You are watching one of the nine trailers we are distributing, each addressing one particular train of thought in coaching, and each will be addressed in the documentary as a whole. May the contributions inspire you to have richer dialogues with colleagues, peers, clients, and in your communities. Thank you for watching this documentary on behalf of Mama Organization. Enjoy. Letting go of the need to know our client. Often there's an expectation that you can kind of box things. So you can say people like this are like that and people like that are like this. And if you're coaching. So when I did my coach training and I have to say I burnt my notes. But when I did my coach training, I had 50 centimetres of, of handouts and there was probably... 10 centimetres of handouts, which was how to coach different kinds of people. This kind of person, that kind of person, the other kind of person, the other kind of person, boom, boom, boom. Lists and lists, pages and pages. And each one, you'd have 10 pages on how to coach people like this. But actually, what I know now, after 13,000 hours coaching or whatever it is, is everyone is different. And I don't know how to coach anyone unless I ask them. <laughs> So even with those, even with that 10 centimetres deep of paper, actually, that didn't give me the, that didn't give me what I needed to be able to coach any of the people that were labelled in that list. Yeah. What's driving the body-mind disconnect in academia? That's a good question. It's a good question. Um, maybe it is. I'm going really big here, perhaps, but I think it is something in our collective humanity that is sort of running faster than our legs can carry us. Who needs more coaching then? Ah, <laughs> yeah, that's a question that people have been asking me. Why, why don't you coach the professors? Interesting how vulnerability ripples. It's systemic. It is. I'll be honest with you. It's also part of my own growth process that uh, until recently, I haven't felt comfortable coaching uh, full professors. Mm. Um, and that was, that, that has a lot to do with my own experience of feeling, feeling vulnerable, uh, feeling, um, well, dare I say beaten. Mm. Um, and then I cannot be an equal partner. We cannot make our bed while we are in it. We use what we call the bed metaphor. Mm -hmm. The bed metaphor is that it's, it's quite difficult to make your bed if you stay in it. Mm -hmm. Means you need an external, uh, uh, external person to inform you about your blind spots, your, patterns uh, or things like that you cannot see because okay. because you're in the bed <laughs> <laughs> exactly so 
if, if you agree on the fact that the coachee needs a coach, then you must agree on the fact that the coach needs someone else to do the same kind of job. Have courage. Clients are looking for more. Yeah, in, in fact, they are now informed about what is coaching. Mm. Some of them, uh, they have, uh, and there is a lot of information in magazines. Mm. Uh, they have discussed at, uh, on the golf course about uh, coaching <laughs> with, <laughs> with their mm -hmm. colleagues. Mm -hmm. And so uh, clients know more and more what is coaching. So they are more and more, not demanding, but... Uh, Higher expectation, yes. I would say. Higher expectations. Higher expectation. Not not mm -hmm. higher demand, but higher expectation. After me somatizing some irritation between Mireille and Solange in our interview, I made a cut and invited both to share what they thought was going on in the here and now of our interview. Well, what I felt was that I needed this moment just to connect with you and just to look and to feel what, what is happening in this moment. Yeah. And but I I just missed I, I missed that moment and I did not address it. So um, yeah, because we, we gathered here. Yeah. We talked a bit yeah. with people uh, here. Mm -hmm. And then there was a technical setting. Yeah. Quickly adjusting to it. Mm -hmm. And then go. Oh, <laughs> with this conversation. Just go and do it. <laughs> yeah. What kept you from addressing it? Yeah, I, um, it, it's an old thing. <laughs> the, uh, the old voices that t tells me, well, you just do your best and do not let anyone uh, um, see that you're struggling. And but I think that, well, our clients also struggle. Of course. And we all struggle in life. And that coaching is about addressing the struggles. And you, Mireille? We cut the, 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 the recording. Yeah. And um, we put some beautiful music on. Yeah. And we could <laughs> dance and give our body some, some space. Yeah. Yeah, and also for me it works good. Okay, so thank you for the opportunity to to get loose a bit. Oh, okay. And um, yeah, we we were um, before we were talking, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, maybe we were so preoccupied both of us <laughs> with this exciting <laughs> new setting. setting. <laughs> I wished we were more coaches. I wished we were kinder humans. I wished we were a saner world. I wished we were more present. Let's have a discourse to understand coaching more deeply. Let's have the world understand interconnectedness in coaching. Let's have coaches understand their power and accountability. Oh, fool.